out of all the commandments, which one is the greatest? This was the question a teacher of the law asked Jesus. During that time, the Jews had 613 precepts in the law, 365 of which are negative, meaning things you should not do, while 248 are positive, or things which you must do. One of their favorite pastimes at the time was to discuss which one is the greatest of all the commandments. The teacher of the law was trying to trap Jesus in giving a law which is not found in the book of Moses. In Mark 12, verse 29 to 31, Jesus answered, The most important one is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is like this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. This morning, we're going to unpack and explain this passage by answering the following questions. One, who is the God that we should love? Number two, why do we have to love God? And number three, how do we love God? Who is the God that we should love? Now, if you ask around, do you love God? Then people will say, yes, we love God. But which God are we talking about? Some people say that since they can see God, then they have to uh, make a statue or an image so that they could see their God and worship Him. Some people say that, um, well, God is there. It's someone that we do not know, an impersonal God. Some people, on the other hand, they reject Jesus as the Son of God. You can hear from the news that there is an ongoing interfaith dialogue that seeks to promote the idea that all religions are the same, that all lead to God or to heaven. But we know this is not true because Jesus clearly said in John 14 verse 6, I am the way to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through me. So who is this God that Jesus is referring to? Is Jesus saying that we must love God, the Father only? Okay, let's look at these Bible passages. In John 8 verse 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I am have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Then in John 5, 42, But I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. So from these two passages, we can see that to love God is to love and accept Jesus for who He is. And who does Jesus claim he is? John 10, 30. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. That is why upon hearing, he, upon hearing this, the Jewish opponents of Jesus picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? And they replied, we are not stoning you for the good works. We are stoning you for blasphemy. Because you, a mere man, claim to be God. So the opponents of Jesus knew and understood what he meant. And not only that, remember, during the trial of Jesus before the Sanhedrin, Jesus was asked by the high priest, are you the Christ, the Son of God? Jesus answered, You have said so, 
But I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus was alluding to the Son of Man mentioned in Daniel 7 verse 13 to 14, who was given authority, glory, sovereign power, that all nations and people serve him. That is why the high priest, upon hearing this, um, tore his clothes and found Jesus guilty of blasphemy and have Jesus crucified. In the same way, those people who reject Jesus as the Son of God also reject God the Father. They do not love God the Father. But wait a minute, diba? Jesus said in Deuteronomy 6.4, or the Shema, Sabi niya, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Magpatalinghog ka, O Israel. Si Jehovah, nga atong Diyos, maoy usa lamang ka Jehovah. So people may ask you, if Jesus said the Lord is one, or Yahweh is one, then Jesus cannot be God. Since there cannot be two gods, and they would cite Exodus 20 verse 3, you shall have no other gods before me. Does it mean that Christians are committing idolatry for loving and worshiping Jesus? You see, the Hebrew word for one that is used in Deuteronomy 6.4 is Ehad. Ehad talks about the uniqueness and the unity of God. What do you mean by uniqueness? When you say Ehad, it means alone. So, in other words, Moses is saying that Yahweh alone is the God of Israel. The word also means a compound unity rather than an absolute singular. What does it, what does it mean? Kasi ang absolute singular, the, the proper Hebrew word for it is Yahid. Yahid. Example of compound unity is found in Genesis 2.24 where a man is joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh, a had. They shall no longer be two, but one, a had. So another example is one family. When you say one family, it doesn't mean that there's only one person. There could be the father, the, son, the mother, the son, the daughter, etc. So just like a had, no? Even in Mark chapter 12, verse 29, Jesus said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Since the New Testament is written in Greek, the one used here is heis, heis, which in Greek means a compound unity. Example is John 10.30. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Uh, the word one in Greek is heis, which is a compound unity. Therefore, by quoting Deuteronomy 6.4, Jesus did not deny his own deity. Jesus, while he was still alive, allowed people to worship him. I'm sure you already know this. Okay, as a, as a review, do I remember? After the Jesus, I'm sorry, after the disciples saw Jesus walk on water and he calmed the storm, the disciples worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. And also when the reason Jesus appeared before the women, the women's reaction was they clasp on the feet of Jesus and worship him. And also another instance, um, Thomas doubted that the other disciples have seen Jesus. Sabi niya, I will not believe until I see his nail-pierced hands and unless I see his wounds. And when Jesus appeared to Thomas, what was Thomas' reaction? Sabi ni Thomas, my Lord and my God. He is telling Jesus that you are my Lord and my God. In all of these three instances, Jesus did not tell these people not to worship him. 
Jesus allow people to worship him. So it's very important to know who is the God that we are loving and worshiping. To love God is to love Jesus. To those people who reject Jesus for who he is, for being the Son of God, I'm sorry, but it seems that they are also rejecting God, the Father. Because Jesus plainly said, if you love God, you have to love Jesus and accept him for who he is. As Christians, we should know these basic concepts because we are commanded by Jesus to make disciples, to share his word. And we should always be ready to share, explain, and to defend the reason why we believe what we believe. So who is the God we should love? God the Father, Jesus Christ. And the next question is, why do we love God? But before we answer this question, we have to ask first, why people don't love God? Ngano ang mga tao dili man sa Dios. So there are several reasons. Number one, siguro they don't know God. Obviously, if you don't know God, you don't know how to love God. And there are people who reject Jesus as the Son of God because they don't know God personally. That is why, as Christians, we are commanded by Jesus to reach out for the lost, to share the gospel, because there are people who do not know God. If they do not know God, they wouldn't be able to love God nor worship God. And secondly, there are people who do not love God because they have bad experiences with, in their life. They complain, if there is God, why would he allow evil, pain, and suffering? I think that is the number one reason why people refuse to believe in God. Sabi na, how can there be God? There are many people who are dying, suffering. Oh, especially at coronavirus. If there is God, God will stop this coronavirus. Why would he allow people to die? You know, the problem with this objection is that before there can be an objective evil, there has to be an objective good. Before we can appreciate that there is darkness, there has to be light. And what is the opposite of evil in the world? Is it not good? And there is no one in this world that is absolutely good except God. So it doesn't mean that if there are evil in this world, there is no God. It does not necessarily follow. And besides, atong mga evil na hitabo karon, mga patayan mga tao, that is not because God wants people to kill each other. No. It's because men are sinners. It's because of our fallen nature. We are all sinners. That is why we do the things we do. But that is why God sent His only Son to die on the cross for our sins. And also, People are trying to understand an infinite God using their own finite brains. So, this is because God is God. He is not someone that we can just figure out. So, it's very difficult. And then, there are also people who doesn't want to love God because they're enjoying sin. Because, you know, they're enjoying their lifestyle. Because when they love God, then they have to change. And they, they don't want to change. They're enjoying sin. In fact, I heard um, a story. Sabi niya, I don't want to be a Christian. Kasi when I go to heaven, wala dito mga amigo nako. They're all in hell. So heaven will be lonely. So they, he, he would prefer to be in hell with his friends. I don't know what, what these people are thinking, but that is their reasoning. And then, some people do not want to love God because they are in rebellion, no? Because this is a spiritual battle. People just don't like God because people want to live the life that they want to live. They don't want someone to tell them 
what they have they should not do so for us christians why should we love god why do we love god so there are so many reasons why we love god first and foremost god created us in genesis 1 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and genesis 1 27 god created man in his own image in the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created them. God created us. So we have a reason to love God. And aside from that, God sent Jesus into the world to reveal Himself. Alamo, the best proof that God exists is Jesus. It's Jesus. Because Jesus came here and claimed that He is the Son of God. And then, and then people asked Him, what is your proof? Sabi ni Jesus, I will die, and then after three days, I will rise from the dead. And Jesus did exactly as he predicted. Well, for the past few weeks, we have discussed about the evidence of Jesus' resurrection. There, the, the, there is no other plausible explanation. The only explanation, all the historical facts, all the evidence... All of this evidence points to the fact that Jesus indeed rose from the dead. And if Jesus rose from the dead, that everything that he has told the disciples are true. He is the Son of God. There is indeed God. Did I remember there was one time Philip was talking with Jesus? Said, Philip, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. But what did Jesus say? Don't you know, Philip, that anyone who has seen me has seen the Father? So, since a lot of people have seen Jesus, we also have seen God. And another reason why we should love God is because God loves us. He sent His only begotten Son Jesus to die and pay for the penalty for our sins. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. And in Romans 5, 8, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And another reason that we should love God is because God is so good to us. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Our God will supply all our needs according to the riches in glory of Christ Jesus. Tanan ng atong kinanghanlan, ihatag sa ginoo. Di ba? Kaayo sa ginoo. And then ingon po siya na if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Pag makasaata, mga ita pasaylo, kita pasayloan sa Diyos. Diba? Napaka maayo ang Diyos. And also, God promised us that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Dilitan niya pabayan o biyaan. Wow! Di ba? Kanindot sa mga promises sa ginoo. And then lastly, we love because He loves us first. Those of us who are parents, di ba? Want our children to love us. Ganahan ta ka ng anak na to, mahigugma po ka na to. Manuman, di ba? Because we love them first. When they are still babies, we feed them. We take care of them. Ato silang pakaon, tagaan sa nina, paskwilahon, tanan mga kinahanlan nila, atong ihatag. So gusto nato na pagdako nila, mahigugma po sila ka nato. The same is true with God. God wants us to love Him. Because He created us, He loved us, He supplied all our needs, and He 
led his own son to die for our sins. That's how much God loves us. That is why we have to love him back. And what did Jesus mean when he said that we have to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Ano sa pasabot, Ana? Okay, let's define the terms first. Heart. Heart in Hebrew, levav. You know, heart, um, we know the heart is the organ which pumps the blood, no? Yung kasing-kasing, we know that. But do you know that in the Old Testament, the heart, uh, the, the word heart is being used in different senses. The heart can refer to the seat of emotions. Okay? The heart can also refer to the seat of intention or the seat of the will. For example, Ezra set his heart to study the Torah or the law of Moses. So itong heart, gigamit po siya as seat of thought. But in Genesis 6.5, every thought of the heart was only evil continually. So the heart in the Old Testament also refers to a person's mind. In fact, 50% of the time, the word heart refers to the mind. Because in the Hebrew word, Mungod, wala man sila separate words sa brain or mind. So they use levav for both heart and mind. That is why if you notice, if you compare Deuteronomy 6.5 and Mark 12, verse 30. You will notice that there is slight difference kasi in 6, Deuteronomy 6, 5, nakabutang diha, that love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. But in Mark 12, 30, Jesus mentioned about the heart, soul, mind, and strength. Na ay gidugang na mind. Jesus add mind because the heart refers both to the heart as well as to the mind. That's why gibutang niya heart, soul, and mind. Kasi if we translate levav for heart only, then it will leave, that it would only mean 50% of the word. So, so ito nga ni Jesus, heart, mind, soul, and strength. So, loving God with all our heart means that we love God from the inside, our whole being committed to God. Okay, the word soul in Hebrew, nefesh. It could mean the life of an individual or the animals. It could also mean person, the person. Um, nefesh is being used to refer to the whole inner self. All our emotions, desires, physical characteristics that make each of us human beings unique. Nefesh. Okay? In fact, the, the Psalms uh, say that, itong Psalm 103 verse 1, Bless the Lord, all my, O my soul, Nefesh, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. So everything that is within me, we bless. So we love God with our whole person, everything within us. And the last one is strength. In Hebrew, me'od. You know, in Hebrew, ang me'od is being used as an adverb. So it means greatly, exceedingly. Uh, but here, me'od is being used as a noun. That, why, that is why the common translation is strength. So the word is also translated as the, our substance, our possessions. So this means that we have to love the Lord our God to the total excess or to the top. Sobra-sobra. Dapat sobra-sobra uh, ang atong pagmamahal sa Diyos. So to summarize, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength means to love God with our whole being. Tanan, tanan. We should not hold anything back in loving God. 
In fact, Jesus said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Does this passage mean that Jesus is commanding us to hate our parents, spouse, children? No, no, no. no. This, that is not what Jesus meant. What Jesus meant is that we must love our family less than we love Christ. We must bear our cross and follow Jesus. We must surrender everything to Him. Even if our family will disown us because we are Christians, we still have to follow Jesus. Jesus wants us to prioritize our relationship with Him above all our relationship with other people and even our own life. We have to love Jesus more than our own life. You know, as parents, as a parent, I love my children. I will not trade them for anything in this world. But Jesus is telling me, is telling us, that we have to love Him more than our children. Inana karadikal ang pagmamahal na kailangan ng Diyos. Sobra, sobra. Now, let's go to the practical aspect. So, how do we love God? So, we know that we have to love God with all our heart, soul, and strength. But how do we do it in real life? Well, there are several things that we can do. Number one, our life's choices and decisions must be aligned with God's will. What's up, Pastor Botana? Because when we love God, we want to be more like Jesus. That's why we are called Christians. We are the follower of Jesus Christ. Our life choices and decisions are all for God's glory. Meaning, tandaan na decisions sa atong kinabuhi, atong kurso na kwaon, atong career, atong mga negosyo, atong mga trabaho, tanan, tanan, para mahimaya ang ginoo. All of them are for God's glory. So, we connect our will to God's will. Parang, parang parehas ng giingo ni Jesus na, not my will, O Lord, but your will. So, when we Pray to the Lord, Lord, unsa may gusto ni mo buhaton na ako. So our life's purpose should be aligned to what is God's purpose for our life. We must have, we have to live a life that is in accordance with God's purpose. So whether it be in school, sa atong mga trabaho, negosyo, tanan, pamilya, we do everything for God's glory. For Him alone. Para yun mahimaya ang ginoo. So that's how we love God. By giving ourselves totally and by surrendering our lives to Him. Lord, unsay gusto ni buhatan sa akong kinabuhi. That's how we love God. I know, lisod siya. Lisod siya. But that's how we do it. We surrender our life to God. Anong gusto niya buhatan sa atong kinabuhi? And the second way we can love God is we feel what God feels. What do you mean by that? Diba, when we love a person, and then if that person feels pain or is hurting, we also feel, we also empathize. Parang usahay, makita na ako ang anak na ako, nag-uul kaayo, kanang, diba, nadapa siya, and then sakit kaayo, hilak siya, na parang maluoy ka, you, you also feel the pain of your child. And the same is true with us. If we claim to love God, we will feel God's joy whenever a sinner would repent. 
Diba? Remember the parable of the lost sheep? Diba? There, are, there were 100 sheep and one of the sheep got lost and the shepherd looked for that sheep. And then once he found the sheep, there will be great rejoicing in heaven. This, dapat, dapat anak po atong attitude. When we hear a sinner repent, turn to God, we have to be happy. Happy for God because that is what makes God so happy. And we also grieve whenever God grieves. For example, um, we can hear in the news that in other parts of the world, Christians are being persecuted. So whenever we hear this, those news, we feel sad for them. So that's how we love God because we feel what God feels. We empathize with God. And then we also become angry whenever we hear that there are injustices in this world. Diba? We hear about injustices against the poor, the, the weak, the oppressed. We feel it too. Because if we have the love of God, we will feel it too. Because um, we see that while Jesus was on earth, he cared about the widow, the sick, the poor, the lost, the sinners. Dapat inana puta. Because Jesus said that I did not come to call the righteous but sinners. So dapat inana puta that, that we should love the sinner but hate the sin. That we reach out to them. Pung makita nato sila, we feel that they need Jesus. That is how we know that we have God's love. That's how we know that we love God. For me, I also experienced that because um, lately our law office, law office has been handling pro bono cases because I feel drawn to those clients that are, some of them wrongly charged, okay? I feel the injustice, no? And, but some of them were uh, sinners, yeah, yeah. But, and I also feel that I want to help them because Jesus came not to call the righteous but the sinners. Because this, itong mga accused, these are sinners. I notice it's easier to share the gospel. In fact, um, we have been visiting the prison. And whenever we share the gospel, we can see, makita na mo na, kanin mga tao sa prisohan, mas open ang ilang kasing-kasing na maminaw sa pulong sa Diyos. Kaya nga no, kikabalo sila, sadan sila. And, and they are looking for hope na makalaya sila. So mas dali i-share ang gospel sa ilaha. Unlike those people outside, na they feel that they don't need Jesus. They feel that they are good, that they are prideful, that they don't need Jesus. Mas lisud is share ang gospel. So, I feel that this is also my ministry. Na, na I act as a lawyer for these people. And sometimes, although they commit the crime, but the problem is, nakikita na ako, the victims, um, sobrang galit nila sa accused, that sometimes, even though there is no evidence, or there is lack of evidence, they will create evidence, just to make sure that the accused get convicted. Sometimes ganun eh. Because you don't, Correct a wrong by committing another wrong. That's what is happening. That's the reality. Ano ba? Nangawat siya 500. Since gamay raman ang penalty for 500 pesos. Sometimes the, the victim will say, no, he stole 5,000. So dungagan. So that is wrong. Although yes, he is guilty, but sometimes the victim is doing also injustice. So that's where Christian lawyers come in. So they make sure that all the evidence against the accused are proper. And then, dapat kung unsa lang yun ang deserve nila. Because um, 
when we commit injustice against these people, we are also committing sin ourselves. We are violating God's commandment to do justice to people. Okay, another way to love God is we want to know more about God. A good example is um, kanang mga mag-uyab. Diba? If you want to love that person more, diba? you want to talk to that person, magtabi mo, taas kayo, very long hours, because you want to know that person better. You want to know his past. You want to know his attitudes. You want to know his character. And because you know that person more, you learn to love him or her more. And the same is true with God. If we want to love God, we have to know more about Him so that we could appreciate Him. And how do we know more about God? By reading the Bible. If you claim that you are a Christian and you hate to read the Bible, um, that is contradictory. Because as Christian, you want to be in love more with God. You want to know more about God. That is why you read the Bible more. You read the Bible to know who God is, to know more about His attributes, to know more about His plans. When you read the Bible, don't just think that, oh, th those are stories. Old Testament stories about Moses, Abraham. Those are more than stories. When you read about this, you try to figure out who God is, how He works, how He thinks. Diba? Parang, parang mag-uyab, diba? Diba, diba you, you want to know His past para makita ni mo na, uy, pugihan man di siya. Kay, kay, Mutrabaho siya, he will, so he will, he's responsible because makita ni mo sa, based on what he did in the past, na he will take care of his brothers, he will supply, uh, he will work and then help out the family. So makita ni mo na pugihan siya, based on what he did before, di ba? That's how you get to know the person. The same is true with God. To get to know more about God is to read the Old Testament, the New Testament. What was he doing before? How did he love the Israelites? How was he faithful to Abraham, to Isaac? That's how you know. That's how you get to know God. By knowing how he reacts to other people, how he deals with other people. Because if that's how God deals with other people, more or less that is how God will deal with us. The more we know God, the more we will like God, the more we will trust Him, the more we would want to glorify Him, the more we want to talk about Him. We also know God more by listening to the sermon. Lahi good ang quiet time and going to sermon, uh, listening to the Word of God. Kasi ang quiet time, it's what God wants to talk to you, want to speak to you. But the sermon is what God wants to talk to the church. God uses the pastor to minister to his people, to exhort his people. So you have to listen to sermon. And some people, I don't know, you, we claim to love God, but when it comes to sermon, especially during this uh, pandemic, all the sermons are uploaded, and there are so many distractions. Some of us, uh, know, parang, there is a temptation na uh, abang namino sermon, mag browse, browse. No? And sometimes, 
we don't pay full attention to the sermon because we're in Facebook. So there are so many things that we can see. And sometimes when we watch the sermon, some people I know who will fast forward. I, uh, I want to fast forward or back. So they want to skip. What is the sermon all about? I, di man applicable na ako, di na ako. Or boring man topic, di na ako. And I, I think there's something wrong with that, you know. Because a Christian or a mature Christian would want solid milk. And a Christian would love to hear about theology. Theology means, theo means God, logi discourse about God. A mature Christian wants to know more about God. He wants to know more about the character of God. The way I see it, nowadays, mga God, ang mga tao, they want to listen to sermon about what God can do for them, how to be successful, how to know God's will, how to do this, how to do that, how to have joy during this uh, trying times, parang ang gipangita nila is self-improvement. But that is not sermon is all about. Ang sermon could be, we would be talking about God. And we could also be talking about exhortation huh? to build each other up. Ang sermon could be also be practical, like, yes, how to deal with uh, difficulties. Napo na siya. But sermon is all around. Dapat maminaw ka, all of it. Hindi lang, ah, diri lang ako maminaw kay practical, ma-apply na ako. Pero pag mga discussion about the cross, di ako ganana na, boring. That, that, that should not be our attitude. Because if we love God, we want to know more about God. We, we want to know, wow, ito pala yung plano ng ginoo. We want to know what will happen in the future. Di ba? So, that's, that's how our attitude should be. We have to know more about God. Because, you know, a lot of people want to go to heaven. When, whenever we ask, who wants to go to heaven? Everyone wants to go to heaven. But do you know what we're going to do in heaven? We're doing nothing there except to worship God to praise the Lord, to worship the King of Kings. So how do we worship God? So we praise the Lord. It's not about singing, ah, worship, so we are going to sing songs. But all of these songs are based on the character of God. Diba? We sing that, that you are marvelous, O God. You are wonderful. You are the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. You're the God who heals. You're the Emmanuel. You're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You're, you're faithful God. Diba? So when we worship God, we speak about who God is. And if you do not like to know about God, if you do not like to read the Bible to find out more about God, if you don't like to hear sermon sermon about theology, so how will you praise God? Uh, diba? So we praise God. We, we read the Psalms. We read the Old Testament, the New Testament, because we find out more about God. And we praise God. Wow, grabe, Lord. You saved the Israelites. You parted the Red Sea. Wow, you're so great, oh Lord. That's how we worship God. So how are we supposed to worship God if while here on earth we are not doing quiet time? We're not allotting time to know more about God. We're not allotting time to praise and worship God. You know, worshiping God is not only limited about praise and worship, singing songs. How about if we remove all this praise and worship? Will you still be worshiping God? We should be worshiping God in everything that we do. 
by reading the Word of God, by praying. But you will ask me, how about, what if I don't feel like having my quiet time? Well, parang hindi ako excited, I don't get anything. But the point is, you have to do it. You know, loving God is not only based on emotion. You see, that's a problem. Parang, I want to read the Bible because I feel excited, I want to know God. Pero pag I don't feel excitement anymore, hindi na magbasa. Hindi eh. Loving God is not only loving God with our heart, emotion, but also with our mind. So we have to force ourselves to read His Word, to pray, even though we don't feel like it. We have to have the discipline. Alam mo, ang secret lang talaga ng quiet time, daily devotion, is discipline. Just like take a toothbrush, di ba? Nga no, di man natin malimitan mag-toothbrush. Kay, naanad naman ta. Di ba? The same is true with having our de- daily devotion. We have to do it every day. Once we do it every day, it will be a habit. So, the day will not be complete if you do not read the Bible, pray to the Lord. That is how we have to cultivate the discipline, the habit. And even those times that we, don't, we, don't, we feel that God is silent, all the more we approach God and have our devotion. Because loving God is not based on our emotion, but based on our will, our mind. Another way to love God is we spend time talking to God in prayer. You know, God speaks to us through His Word, and we speak to God through prayer. Some religion requires the member to pray how many times a day. But the Bible says that we Christians must pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Unfortunately, daghan kay mga Kristuhanon, di kay mag-ampo. Muampo lang kung nai kinanghanglan. If they want something from God. Just imagine yourself. Kalang mga, the parents would um, agree with me. No? Pag ikaw, ginikanan ka, Ganahan baka ang imong mga anak muduo lang nimo kung mangayo og allowance ma pa tagay ko kwarta para sa eskwelahan para sa project etc etc Of course not we want our child to spend time with us quality time with us to play with us talk with us dili lang kung mo ari lang sila nato kung nay kinahanglan kung mangayo ang nahita mo manggod ang mga Kristohanon we want God for the benefit that we can get from God. But we don't, God, we don't want a relationship with God. And that is what the Word wants. We want to hear sermon, kung si makuha para nato. We want, we accept Jesus because we don't want to go to hell. But we don't live a life or we don't cultivate that relationship with God. We just want to have that benefit of being forgiven, of being saved. But we don't want to put Jesus as Lord in our heart. That is not what Christianity is all about. God wants a relationship with us. Ganahan siya, relasyon. Mubasa sa iyang pulong, ang muampo ta. And most of the time, no, we, when, whenever we pray, we ask. Which is wrong. Dapat, whenever we pray, we have to worship God. We have to praise Him. We have to thank Him. And find time also to ask for forgiveness for our sins. No, So it's not about hingi, hingi, hingi. It's about worshiping the Lord. Spend time with God. And you know, whenever we pray, we have to also stop talking. Listen to God. Kasi the problem with people is that we pray, parang, ano yun eh, parang, in a true, in a relationship, two way, muad to ang imuuyab ni mo. 
Honey, blah, 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 blah. Taas ko yung mga story, ha? And then, okay na, bye-bye. We don't give the other person a chance to talk. Kasi dapat ang communication two ways. So, dapat whenever we pray, this is what I learned. We should not be the one talking always. We should have time of pause. So, whenever we pray, to go if pray for 10 minutes, to go we keep quiet for 5 minutes, doing nothing but to listen to God. Because it is during those time that you are quiet that God will speak to you in His still small voice. What do you mean by that? But sabi ko, God speaks to us through His Word. And Jesus said that He has given us His Counselor. And that Counselor will remind you of His Word. So whenever you pray, you keep quiet, listen to God. And the Holy Spirit will impress upon you. Will help you remember certain Bible verses. That is how God speaks to us in a still small voice. We have to be sensitive, my brothers and sisters. You know, God is real. God wants to have a relationship with us. God wants to have a communion with us. And we have to give Him that. We have to spend time with Him. And another way to love God is to obey His commandments. You can see this in the Bible. There are so many verses on this. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. And in Deuteronomy 10, 12. Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God. To walk in all His ways. To love Him. To serve Him. To keep the Lord's commandments and His statutes. Which I am commanding you today for your good. So makita gud nimo ang ganahan ng Dios is we are obedient to him. And in John 14:21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. So so if you want Jesus to be real in our life, we have to keep the Lord's commandments, all of them, and love Him. And in 1 John 5, 2-3, to this is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out His commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep His commands. And His commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. You know, the problem with some Christians, di ko ganahan mag-obey kay lisod man. But, you know, the commands of God are not burdensome. They are all for our good. So we have to obey the Lord. Dapat musunod ta sa iyong kagustuhan. And in Second John 1, 6, this is love that we walk in obedience to His commands. Tapat mo obey ta. And what are these commands that we have to obey? That is why we have to read the Bible. How could we know what are these commands if we do not read the Bible? So, reading the Bible and praying, those are the basic things that Christians must do. And you know, it's easy to obey if we know that everything will work out good. It's easy to obey if we know what will happen in the end. But sometimes the Lord will ask us to obey 
even though we don't know what is going on. That's why, ang obedience, kailangan po na I trust. Trust and obey. Because there are times that when God tells you to do something and you do not understand, we have to obey still. We have to trust first. Just like Abraham, di ba? Sabi ni God, um, go out of your father, father's land, to the land I will show you. He obeyed. God did not tell him, where, where am I going, God? Basta, go. And God gradually reveals to Abraham his plans for him. So, dapat inana po tao. We should be willing to obey even though we do not know what the future holds. I'll just give my testimony. When, when DCF had no pastor in the church and there was a call for members to rise up, no? I obeyed God. In fact, I don't know what I was thinking. I just obeyed. And, you know, and I'm, I'm glad I did, you know, because when the Lord calls you to pastor His church, the advantage is that the Lord ministers to me first. You know, before I preach something to you, I study God's Word. And, mas taghan ko natunan by reading the Lord, studying, and then preaching, kaysa maminaw lang ko. And now, you know, my prayer before is that, Lord, if you call me, help me to love you more. And that is what the Lord is doing in my life for the past year. The Lord is revealing Himself to me, and He is making me love Him more. He's making me love to know more about His Word, to learn more about theology, to learn more about Him. You know, the work of the Lord is not burdensome. Basta obey lang ta. We have to obey even though we are, even if God is leaving, leading us to a valley, to a flood, to a storm. Whatever or wherever God wants to lead us, we obey because He knows what is best. And what is and the good thing about obedience, and there are so many Bible verses on this, is that, you know, obedience is the key to God's favor. There are so many Bible verses which says that whenever you obey, God will bless you. The Gandhiya is in the Bible. Once you obey, the Lord will bless you. But our focus in obeying God, in loving God, is not after the blessing. Because what if the blessing will not come? Will you still continue to love God? Because our focus nato is not the blessing but the person giving the blessing. We should love God for who He is. We have to love God for who He is. And what else does God command us? We have to love Him with all our heart, soul, and strength. And the second commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves. So what does it mean? Jesus is quoting from Leviticus 19.18. Love your neighbor. Because if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first to fourth commandment is about loving God, while the fifth to the tenth commandment is about loving our neighbor. And Jesus added, as yourself. Meaning, the teaching of Jesus is radical. Kung giunsa ni mo paghigugma imong kawilingon, dapat ingana po ang paghigugma ni mo sa laing tao. And, and, and one of the teachers of the law asked Jesus, who is our neighbor? And you, I'm sure you already know this story, the Good Samaritan. Ang, ang atong neighbor is not someone we, we, who are close to us, but it's someone we don't know. It includes someone we hate, someone who is our enemy. Because ang love, 
um, the love of God is like this. Love God, love, uh, God loves us first. It's a vertical love. And we love God back, vertical. And then because of that love, we love other people, horizontal. So to claim that we love God, but if we hate people, that is a contradiction. And that is my prayer to God, to help me to be more loving, to, 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 be, to care for other people. And that should be all our prayer because man, kita, we are selfish by nature. We just want to take care of ourselves. No? But we should not be like that because Jesus said that whatever or the least that we do to, to his brothers, we do it also to him. Do you remember the parable of the sheep and goats? Sabi Jesus, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. When I, I needed clothes, you clothed me. When I was sick, you looked after me. When I was in prison, you came, came to look for me. And when you ask, when, were you, when, when did we see you hungry, Lord? When did we see you thirsty? When did we see you naked? When did we see you sick? When did we see you in prison? Sabin Jesus, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. I know it's very difficult, but this is Jesus' command. We have to love our neighbors. We have to love each other. Even sa simbahan nato, we have to love each other. We have to take care of each other's needs. We have to pray for each other. And we have to pray for other people, even our enemies. Lisod. Lisod yun. And you know what? Loving God, I mean, is more important than offerings and sacrifices. Kasi, there are people who had the wrong thinking that I love God because I serve in the church. I serve in the praise and worship. I serve as a song leader. I serve as in the, I serve in the orchestra. I serve as a council of the church. I serve as a, a church leader. So I love God. But it is not what you do on Sundays, but all throughout the days that are that is important you may be serving god on sundays but how is your life from monday to saturday are we cultivating that love relationship with jesus are we also having our own personal devotion are we praying with the lord you know importante the Lord looks at our heart. Kasi what if the Lord will take away all the ministries? Ang maiwan es, kasi mabilin. Will you still love me? Bisantang tangol ang ministry. Because I feel there, there is a lot of shaking right now no? because of this pandemic. We, we, we don't have praise and worship it's very difficult to do it because we, we are in quarantine. We don't want to meet because we don't want to have the risk that we might uh, infect each other. But if the Lord takes away all these ministries, are we still going to love Him by spending time, having a quiet time, by praying? That's, because that's important. God says, it's better to obey than sacrifice. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Love is more important than anything else. What matters most is our relationship with Jesus. And this is the challenge, church, for everyone whether you are in the ministry serving the Lord 
or not. If the Lord will take away the ministry, can you still say that you love God? Can you still say that I'm very close to the Lord because I'm doing the things that He likes? Your personal spiritual growth is important, beloved. All of us wants to love the Lord more. And how do we love the Lord more? How? Um, Jesus gave this parable. Sabi niya, uh, Jesus gave this, um, this was a time when a Pharisee invited Jesus to his home. Uh, and then, a, a sinful woman came and then she poured perfume on the feet of Jesus. I mean, she wiped the feet of Jesus with her hair. And then, ang Pharisee said, if, this, if he's a prophet, he would know that this is a sinner. And then, nahibao ni Jesus. Kablo si Jesus on say gihun-huna niya. So, ingon ni, ingon ni, ni Jesus, nai duha ka tao na nangutang. Ang usa, nangutang og 500 denarii. Ang usa, 50 lang. And then, para sila, isa kabayad. And then, ingon ng lender. Okay, your debts are forgiven. So, who between the two of them would love the creditor more? Ang ingon ni Simon, I suppose, the katumas dako utang. Sabi Jesus, sakto ka. And then, nakita na yung babae. Nakita mo kanyang babae? No? I came into your house, you did not give me water. Pero siya, nitrapuhan niya akong tiil gamit sa iyang luha. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman keep on kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. And take note of this one. As her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. So the secret of loving God more is to look at yourself. Look at the sins that you have committed against God. And then, once makita ni mo how broken you are, how undeserving you are to God's love, masabi mo, kanindot sa ginoo, kabuutan ng ginoo, na nahigugma siya, na ako, bisan, Grabe ang akong past. And that is how I also learned to love God more. I recall all the things that I have done before. And I feel that I am not worthy of God's love, of God's forgiveness. Once I feel and once I realize how the Lord has forgiven me, how great the sins that I have that the Lord has forgiven me, the more I appreciate and the more that I love God more. Dapat inala po ta. You look, about, look at your life. Kasi if you look at our life, ah, wala man ko problema, okay man ko. I'm perfect then how would you learn to love God more? Because you think that you're perfect. And you know, you know the problem is, people think that they're okay because they keep on comparing them himself to other people. Oh, mas maayaw ko sa uban kay ano uban, wa ko na priso, wala ko nangawat, 
I'm doing good. Whenever you compare with other people, you will feel that you are okay. But the best thing to do is to compare yourself with Jesus, with God. Once you compare yourself with God, you will say, Wow, grabe. I am nothing. Lord, you are holy. Walang wala ako. I think that is our, what should be our attitude. When we look at God, we will know that we are sinner. Woe is me, a sinner. It's not an awareness that I am a sinner that leads me to worship God. It's an awareness that I have been forgiven. Since we've been forgiven, we should love God more. We should love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. So what did we learn today? So we asked three questions. Who is the God that we should love? We love God. We love Jesus. Because they are one. Why do we love God? Because God loves us first by sending His own Son to die on the cross for our sins. And how do we love God? Everything. Everything that we got, we love God. 